Hello, and welcome to the SolidCam introduction series of training videos. The topic for this discussion is Pro 3D HSM. Pro 3D HSM toolpaths are the next step above the standard HSM selections. These will calculate faster than standard HSM toolpaths, as well as giving you more levels of refinement and control over your toolpaths. These are powerful 3D finishing strategies based on your target and stock selection as you described in your initial part setup, but offer additional options over standard HSM toolpaths. These options will give you more levels of control. To activate a Pro 3D HSM toolpath, you're going to go to your SolidCam 3D tab and select Pro 3D HSM. The toolpath offerings are as follows. HSM Constant Z, Constant Z Rest Machining, HSM Linear, HSM Constant Stepover, Constant Stepover Rest Machining, Pencil Tracing, whether it be Single Pass Pencil or Multiple Pass Pencil, Horizontal or Flat Surface Machining, and there are some combined toolpaths that will combine Constant Z with Linear as well as Constant Z with Constant Stepover. We'll go through the details of some of these toolpaths now. Let's start by looking at a linear toolpath. Linear toolpaths cut back and forth across the part at a defined vector. If we were to open up that parameter page for the linear toolpath, you're going to notice that the workflow is exactly the same as what it's been in all levels of SolidCam, and that is we're going to pick the geometry, select a tool, and then set the necessary parameters for the toolpath. You're going to notice some differences here under the geometry selection over standard HSM. Initially, the target is being set automatically as you described it in your project setup. However, you can include additional surfaces here, and your offset for, for material as far as it relates to the target is set down here in this field. So in this case, the target selected leaving a global offset of 10 thousandths. You can change this, however, to be both axial and radial offset if you've needed a differential stock to leave in axial versus radial surfaces. You have the ability to include additional solids and or surfaces for particular reasons, which we'll cover in a, in a later part of this video. But you can come in and you can individually select areas of the model and apply a different amount of differential offset to them. We'll do that in a, in a future toolpath. As it relates to stock, stock calculation in this case is being based off of, off of the the global setups in your part, but you can have it respect the stock model automatically updating based on the stock in the current state. So as you start to get a progression of tool paths going down, you can have it be cognizant of the stock in the current condition. If you do have your toolpath calculated based on that stock, you can see what that stock likes, looks like in the current state. So in this case, I have the part completely roughed out so we can see the roughing strategies on there. And that's what the stock looks like in the current state. In this case, I don't need this toolpath being, being reflecting on that stock, but you can have the toolpaths independently be cognizant of the stock or not. If you are using the stock model for referencing toolpath areas for machining, you can then filter out various regions based on certain conditions. You might get a straight toolpath in, a, in an area that it sees a small little blip of stock out there, and you may not need it to go out there and machine that. You can filter out different harsh portions of that toolpath here. You can also include fixtures as part of the toolpath calculation process. So in this case here on my particular example, I've got a vice fixture. If I need the fixture to be included as part of the toolpath calculation, I can right click in this window and I can either add and I can pick surfaces or models that are already described in my project, or I can come out and independently select surfaces or models based on what I need it to be calculating as well. So if I need the fixture, again, to be included as part of the calculation process, I can collect that, that information into my toolpath and then give it a safety area of, of a, a value to stay away from that stock. Again, this is entirely dictated in whether or not you need, that, need your fixtures to be calculated as part of the process. In this case here, I'm going to delete those from the selection. Here I've selected a 3 8 ball end mill for machining 
and the toolpath has no containment boundaries, but the containment boundaries works very it works exactly the same as what you've seen in previous videos. In this case, my containment boundary is created automatically based on the stock model. It's allowing the tool to run up to the center of the tool, up to the center of the of the constraint boundary. In the passes tab, pretty much what you've seen before in other tool paths. You're going to give it a step over, or you can give it a scallop height. And in this case, I've really got no other options turned on, and it's just going to give me a tool path that calculates against the model, cutting back and forth at a defined vector. You can control the vector based on your directions. Linear tool paths are again designed to cut in the shallower regions of a part so in areas where the part becomes very steep the step down becomes greater than the step over not giving me a good finish in those areas you have the ability to introduce perpendicular passes in those regions or areas to instigate that on the passes tab simply turn on the perpendicular pass and it will put it where the step down becomes greater than the step over it will introduce perpendicular passes in those regions or areas all of these tool paths, you're going to notice some consistency between the passes tabs. Some of these options will change if they're tool path specific or dependent, but you'll find that a lot of these are, are same throughout diff different uh, from tool path to tool path. You have the ability to control point distribution based on your based on the same cut tolerance. Sometimes machines, certain machines like to have more points, some machines prefer less points. Your surface tolerance dictates your accuracy of the, of the machine toolpath, but however, in point distribution, you can add additional points along the toolpath cord. So depending on your scenario, you can specify a maximum and a minimum, minimum distance, and if so desired, you can give it the ability to arc fit and best fit arcs in those areas. So if, if you're cutting along a, a plane that your machine can cut arcs in, a G18 or G19 plane, you can arc filter in that type of plane as well. Again, so if you're running a control that does like a lot of points, you can introduce new distances, your own distances along the same uh, uh, tolerance that, that you have set. So even though you're machining to a certain machining tolerance, you can still introduce more toolpath points along those areas. You have the ability with this toolpath to introduce differential work offsets for different areas of the part where you need to have different stock conditions being described. So this toolpath on the screen looks very much like the first one, however, with one difference. In this case here, I've captured a group of faces into my toolpath selection. So in this case, I right clicked on here and selected the surfaces from the model directly. And that's what's being shown here on the screen. Inside of here, I gave it a different offset than my finish offset. So I'm finishing everything but those faces to zero, but on those selected faces, I'm leaving 50 thousands on for additional operations. So if you're working with an area of detail on a part, you can include and capture different components of your part and apply different stock to leaves to those areas independently from one another. So if we look at the toolpath kind of closely, you're gonna see that it kind of moves up to a different level. And if I were to turn on the original uh, linear pass, you'll see that it's, it's now putting a 50,000 stock to leave on those surfaces for additional operations later. So again, if you're working with a parting surface or some areas that you just wanna have differently controlled over the rest of the part, you can selectively pick areas of detail on your model to contain that information in. With linear tool paths, because it is really designed to be used in the shallower areas of the component, you can introduce an angle range. To activate an angle range, simply put a check mark in the box and define the area or region where you want this tool path to cut. Again, um, totally up to you with your parameters, but keeping those steep regions out of the consideration for the linear tool path. Z-level operations, will slice the model at a particular Z step down and then cut around the surfaces at the offset of the tool. Z level operations, in this case straight up, is just calculating at a constant step down. So it's going to give it a step down and then cut around the surfaces at those values. Keep in mind in the geometry tab, you can include additional surfaces and capture the surfaces into that if you need to keep a uniform or differential uh, 
stock allowance on different faces. Whether it be linear, Z-level, constant step over, you can contain the toolpaths to boundaries. So if you didn't want to toolpath the cut in a certain region or area, you can obviously instigate boundaries. In this case, I have got a user-defined boundary that is captured into the toolpath, keeping the tool in relationship inside of that boundary. In this, in this case, I'm allowing the tool center to allow to pass to the outside of the boundary. Um, you have the ability with Z-level operations also to control angular contact. So like, like linear operations that work good in the shallow areas, Z-level operations good, work good in the steep areas, you can contain the toolpath to the angular range that you specify. So in this case here, we're cutting in just the steep areas of the part. Constant Z step over. Constant Z step over is a 3D offsetting style toolpath that will maintain a step over in an offsetting style pattern. Constant offset step over can, you have two different types of boundaries. So in this case, I've got a constraint boundary and a drive boundary. The constraint boundary keeps the tool defined within an area. So if I were to look at the boundary that I have my toolpath constrained within, it's constrained within the outside periphery of the block and the central region around the part, the, the, the machine portion of the part. The drive boundary in this case is not selected. In this case, it's going to take the offset of the part shape and, and use that as the drive boundary while offsetting. So it's taking this rectangular shape and offsetting it in and then machining the selected surfaces. You have the ability to control a drive surface as the offsetting boundary. So in this case here, the containment boundary is the same as the previous toolpath, but in this time I initiated what's called a drive boundary. The drive boundary is this boundary around the, around the perimeter of the part itself, and it's carrying that shape to the extents of the part or, or the block of your material, bot, or your part that you're machining. So same type of toolpath with a different type of flow. So you can change and dictate the behavior of that toolpath by selecting a drive boundary. There are various rest finishing style toolpaths that you can describe within Pro 3D HSM. A rest machining operation is machining the areas left by a larger tool and then calculating those toolpaths based on the smaller tool. So in this case, I've got constant step over rest finishing. Constant step over will look very much like the toolpath we just seen where it's a 3D offsetting style toolpath. In this case, I picked a smaller tool and gave it a reference tool. So your reference tool is the previous tool that you finished with and you're referencing that tool. From here, you're gonna give it the passes or the step over of when it's offsetting in the material that's left and it's gonna give you a toolpath that machines in just the region that was left from the previous tool with this 3D offsetting style toolpath. You can rest finish a rest finish a rest finish. So you can take progressions in your step down from tool diameter to tool diameter. So in this next case, I've got a secondary tool for a continuation of my rest finishing. Again, in this case, select my tool selection for this tool path is an eighth of an inch, and I'm referencing the previous finish size of my tool path of the previous tool path. You also have the ability to do constant Z rest finishing with Pro 3D HSM toolpaths. This is the same type of mentality, but this time taking a Z level type of operation while cutting the rest finish regions or areas. In this case, you're gonna select the tool that you wanna rest finish with, and then reference your previous finishing tool parameters. Inside of here, you can control your step down as well as give it Z-level ranges if you needed to stop the toolpath calculation at a particular height or level. Again, all of these parameters have a commonality between them, and you can control, obviously, how you enter and exit, which is also common between all of the Pro 3D HSM toolpaths. Pencil cutting single pass. Three, Pro 3D HSM tool pass, I can do a single trace pencil trace, which will take the tool that you chose, in this case, this 3 8 ball end mill, and it will ch chase the tangencies of the tool around the selected surfaces or areas. Inside of, inside of your passes, 
you're pretty much just going to give it the, t the by tangency angle of where it calculates of where it can calculate the tangency points along the tool. And this can be used as a corner picking operation, a lot of times used for finishing the scallop heights that might be left from a previous toolpath or multiple toolpath operations coming around and just chasing the cusps or chasing the tangency between those passes. If we were to watch a simulation of this, it's just simply going to trace all the tangent points that that tool can fit. If you ever have a condition where the tool is not chasing a tangency, it's going to have to do with a lot of times the tool diameter that you picked, you might be smaller than the radiuses that you described and it they can't chase a tangency along those surfaces. Again, single pace, single trace pencil pencil tracing. You can also do multiple pass pencil tracing as well. This will allow you to then take multiple passes on the fillets to machine the fillets into the corner. So in this case here to instigate multiple passes simply go to the passes tab tell it the number of passes you want with the specified step over. It will automatically calculate the passes based off of based off of that spacing, starting to the outside of the fillet as it works its way into the, into the part or the material. As with standard HSM toolpaths, we have a series of combined toolpaths that optimize the toolpaths to particular regions or areas. In this case, I've got a combined constant Z with linear. Putting the toolpath in the appropriate area that it's most effective at cutting. So in this case, I've combined constant Z with linear toolpath. Here it will give you options and parameters that contain the information for the steep and shallow regions of the part. You have the parameters for the steep areas as being a step down and the, in this case the shallow regions I stepped over 20 thousandths as well. You, in this case I cut across the part at a 45 degree vector and overlapped the angle condition, I'm cutting from 0 to 45 and 45 to 90, that's the transition period, and then I'm overlapping the toolpath by 5 degrees. And the resultant toolpath is a toolpath that gives you a very nice interlacing of both steep and shallow toolpaths together. This is a great toolpath because it allows for a one operation type of strategy. And that way, you know, you've seen with the other toolpaths, you have the ability to cut the part globally or independently control it and turn on angular regions, but then you have multiple operations. This is an operation that is a one single type toolpath that contains everything. I appreciate you watching this video and I hope to see you again at the next.